Initially, anatomy was a way for Leonardo to make his paintings of the human body more effective. To start with, his knowledge wasn't based on first-hand observation, but on speculative classical literature stretching back to Galen and Aristotle. This meant that Leonardo's drawings of the human body weren't always anatomically correct. But his inquiring mind asked questions about the human form that had never been asked before. The breakthrough came at the end of the decade when Leonardo inscribed the head of a page in a new notebook on the second day of April 1489, later adding book entitled On the Human Figure. And in the pages that followed, he executed this exquisite series of drawings of the human skull. They were meticulous, they were lucid, they were very precise, and they were clearly made from first-hand observation. Finally, having greater access to human material gave Leonardo an enhanced understanding of anatomical structures, lending his drawings scientific credibility. But of course, it wasn't just about observation for Leonardo. He was also an excellent draftsman. So what I'm going to do is take the skull off for you and ask you to make a series of studies of it upside down. I want to find out how Leonardo articulated his understanding of the body through drawing. So I'm back in London to meet artist Sarah Simblet. What do you feel you've learnt from Leonardo's anatomical drawings? It's been a huge point of reference in that I've learnt technically the use of pen and ink from him. Um, I've learnt very much about uh, the way in which he uses drawing to see and understand structure and form, the way that he uses drawing as an investigative tool as well as a means of thinking and expressing himself. What was Leonardo's technique when it came to making the drawings? He's worked probably with a steel dip pen. When you press it down onto the paper, then two pieces of metal will splay apart, and by undulating the pressure, you can change the, the thickness and the expression of your line. You've obviously looked at his drawings a great deal over the years. In what way are they distinctive compared to other anatomical drawings? Well, he's thinking as an engineer, and he's trying to understand uh, the mechanism of the body, the mechanism of life. Uh, whereas an awful lot of artists have looked at the surface and wanted to be able to render muscular form and the power of the living body, uh, Leonardo actually wants to get inside and understand how it works. And you don't find other artists um, working in that way. So he was a true anatomist. Despite the breakthrough with the skulls, Leonardo put his anatomical investigations aside for a decade or so and went on to other things. For Mercurial Leonardo, this meant anything from designing the Dome of Milan's Cathedral to painting one of his masterpieces, The Last Supper. But his latent enthusiasm for anatomy resurfaced around 1504, and in later life, these studies took up more of his time than any other single activity. The Royal Collections exhibition, Leonardo da Vinci, The Mechanics of Man, at the Edinburgh International Festival, has brought together a huge range of Leonardo's anatomical drawings. And there's one series in particular which has never been shown in the UK in its entirety before. Anatomical Manuscript A consists of 18 sheets on which Leonardo crammed more than 240 individual drawings covering almost every bone in the body and many major muscle groups. Here we see the superficial anatomy of the shoulders and of the neck and you see the same model who's been very sensitively drawn sort of rotating in space so that we as the viewer get a full articulation of something that's 3D even though the drawing obviously exists only in two dimensions. And the series continues right down to the bottom of the sheet where you can see the skin has disappeared and underneath, here are the muscles and the tendons laid bare so that Leonardo's not just observing how things appear in one static sense before his eyes, he's always thinking about how things exist in reality, in our world. He's trying to articulate the functional side of anatomy.
In this series, Leonardo uses static pictures to capture beautifully a sense of physical movement. Every pose has been cleverly chosen to best highlight each muscle group. Dancers, more than any group of people, have a keen awareness of their bodies and how they physically function. I've come to a rehearsal of the Scottish Ballet to talk to their artistic director, Christopher Hampson, about Leonardo's skillful poses in Manuscript A. I find it interesting that he's using movement to further identify muscle groups or ligaments and how far perhaps the joint will move. I find that quite poetic that he's used movement to illustrate something anatomical that could have been quite dry. Christopher has found a unique way of bringing Leonardo's poses to life. Do you think we should introduce the semi-naked man that we've yeah, suddenly sure. had with us? This is our principal dancer, Eric Cavallari. Um, he's going to help us out just uh, in recreating these images. So this is the first example. What have you chosen? Well, I've chosen uh, the shoulder and the arm. I've chosen it because it's actually quite a balletic pose anyway. Because of the, the way that the arm is drooped, we call this allongé. So you can see his arms outstretched. And Eric's automatically put his head looking down at the arm, which you can kind of tell that's indicated from the way the neck is inclined down towards the arm. It's not sort of snapped this way. It's got a slight bend, which you can see he's got there, so that all the muscles are, are well defined. That's where I find these drawings so interesting, is I feel he's used rotation and shaping to make sure that the correct muscles stand out. Ah, so now why have you picked this? So this one again, because it does have a sense of movement to it, so the arm is in what we call a fifth position. So Eric, if you can take fifth position and incline the head, and that gives us this shape. Um, again, just by making the, the forearm rotate in towards the head, um, makes the bicep ping out and ignite. So again, it shows the arm much more clearly. So this is what? This is your third example. And what's happening here? He's showing how the calf muscle gets fired up, how it ignites with movement, I presume. But then he shows this, which is the foot on a high, what we call three-quarter point. You can see immediately mm. that the calf muscle gets fired up. It is a marked difference. Yeah. The gastrocnemius is what it's called, serves to raise the heel. This muscle becomes hard in pulling up the heel as well as releasing it. Yeah. Well, we've just seen that. You've seen it perfectly. Yeah. Leonardo's sketches are remarkably succinct and accurate. And he was able to convey all of this simply through drawing. And now, the Royal Collection's Leonardo exhibition in Edinburgh is doing something rather innovative. This is the first exhibition that compares Leonardo's anatomical discoveries made simply using a scalpel and a pen with sophisticated modern medical imaging techniques like CT and MRI scans and also 3D films. And it's quite staggering to reflect that even though today's anatomists are using contemporary technology. Many of their conclusions are similar to those reached by Leonardo in the far-sighted drawings he made 500 years ago.